it going? I'm Chris. And I'm Jasmine. And welcome back to another video. So today we're doing something a little different. Instead of doing a traditional meal prep, I decided to do a full on breakfast meal prep. Breakfast is the number one thing we always get asked um, to, we always get requests for, for the blog and YouTube. And even when I went vegan, breakfast was one of the hard, harder things for me um, to think of because I ate a lot of animal Eggs, products, honestly. Cheese. Yeah, when I wasn't vegan. Same. So we want to give people options and show them that vegan breakfasts are sweet and simple, they're approachable, and they're delicious. We have four recipes coming to you in this video today. The first are easy breakfast bars made with peanut butter, oats, and they're sweetened with dates. Super tasty. Just pop them into a food processor, that's all you really need for this recipe. In the pan, in the fridge, boom. Boom. And next up we're making an instant pot apple butter and you can spread this on toast. You can make peanut butter and apple butter sandwiches. Put it on oatmeal, yeah. you name it. A lot of different things. Smoothie bowls, <sighs> have fun with it. Next we're making a sweet potato breakfast casserole with sage and thyme. My personal favorite, really good. You love savory <sighs> things. So. I do. And then lastly, we're putting together a pumpkin pie chia pudding. And I actually made this in one of our What I Eat in a Week videos. I will link it for you guys to check out. I kind of just threw things together and a bunch of people were asking me for the recipe for it. And some people even made it on Instagram. I didn't even share a recipe for it. So I was like, you know what? We'll put it together. We'll put it on the blog. Make it official. Now it's official. Yeah. So let's get into the video. Too much talking. Enjoy. First up, we're going to be making some no-bake peanut butter oat bars. To start, in a food processor, we're going to be adding in some rolled oats and some medjool dates. And then we'll just pop the lid on and we will let the oats and the dates process until they become nice and uniform. And then once that's finished, we'll take the lid off and then we'll add in some smooth unsalted peanut butter along with some vanilla extract, cinnamon, and some salt. We'll pop the lid back on and then we'll just let that process again until it becomes uniform. From there we'll pop the lid back off, we'll scrape down the sides as needed, and then we'll add in some pumpkin seeds as well as some dried cranberries. And then we'll just close the lid up once again and then we'll pulse that until it's fully combined. From there we'll transfer the mixture into a lined pan. And then using a spatula, we'll press the mixture into the pan and evenly spread it out. To prevent sticking, we can wet the spatula as well. This will definitely help with that. We'll continue to press it down until the mixture is nice and smooth in the pan. And that is basically it. And now we'll refrigerate for at least two hours to set. And then after that, we'll cut them into bars. You can cut them into any shape you'd like, but we are just doing eight simple bars. And then we'll also store these in the fridge and we're ready to eat. Enjoy. Next up, we're making a sweet potato breakfast casserole. This is for all of the savory breakfast lovers out there. We're going to start off with a nonstick pan with a little bit of water and I'm adding in some cubed sweet potatoes and I'm just going to cook this on medium low for about 10 minutes. Since we're cooking with water here, I'm going to add in about two tablespoons at a time when it dries out to prevent burning. Once the sweet potatoes have cooked, I'm going to add in some onions along with red bell pepper. You can use any color of your choice, garlic and some mushrooms. And we don't need to add additional water just yet because the mushrooms will release a lot of water. So just add some later. Just use your judgment here to prevent burning. Once everything is soft, we're going to add in some chopped up kale, and this doesn't take that long to cook. We're basically going to cook it for about two minutes, allow it to get nice and bright green and softened. So we're going to grab ourselves a baking dish or a casserole dish, and we're going to transfer that vegetable mixture to that dish. You can also grease the dish as well to prevent burning later on. I would recommend it, but if you don't do it, it'll still come out just fine. Spread those out evenly and then we're going to grab a pan and cook up some vegan sausage. This is optional but recommended. We're just going to cook it until it is browned, breaking it up if we need to. And once that is cooked, we're going to transfer it to the baking dish on top of the vegetables. And we're also going to add in some vegan cheese. This is optional but also recommended. It definitely adds some good flavor and color to the dish. Next up, we're going to make the batter for this recipe. So in a high speed blender, I'm adding in some firm tofu along with nutritional yeast, some fresh lemon juice, turmeric for color, along with almond milk and Old Bay seasoning. I'm going to blend that until smooth and add more almond milk as necessary to make a thick batter. 
Next, I'm adding in some herbs and black pepper, and we're just going to pulse that together until it is well combined. Last but not least, we're going to pour the tofu mixture onto the baking dish. Make sure you get every last drop of that, and then we're going to mix that through until it is evenly combined. You could have done this in another large bowl, but I figured why waste a bowl, get another dish dirty, we can just do it in here, it's much easier. So spread that out until it is evenly distributed, and we're going to pop this into the oven for about 35 minutes or until it is golden brown and set. Remove that from the oven, cool completely before serving and you're good to go. We served ours with a little bit of some green onions and it was delicious. Next, we're gonna be making some Instant Pot apple butter. To start out, we'll take the inside of an Instant Pot and then we'll add in some apples. We're using Fuji, but you can use whichever you like. Next, some medjool dates and some water. And then some seasonings. We have cinnamon, salt, nutmeg, ginger, and cloves. We'll take a spatula and mix everything through until the seasonings fully coat the apples and the dates. And then we'll just add the lid onto our Instant Pot and cook on high pressure for about 20 minutes. After 20 minutes, we'll remove the lid, release the pressure, obviously, and then we'll transfer our mixture from the Instant Pot into a high-speed blender. This smells so good, I can't even begin to tell you. So now that our mixture is in the blender, we'll blend that up until it is nice and smooth. And then we'll add it back into our Instant Pot. And we'll saute on low heat for about 25 to 35 minutes, mixing occasionally until thickened. In between each mix, we'll cover the mixture to prevent splattering. You can also use the lid as a shield as you're mixing. And then we'll just continue until it's nice and thick. And then we'll add some vanilla extract, as well as some lemon juice, and mix that in. And just like that, we have our own homemade apple butter. This goes great on toast, in a sandwich, on oatmeal, you name it, it is perfect. Last but not least, we're putting together some pumpkin pie chia seed pudding. So easy to do. You're going to grab a large bowl, and to that add in some unsweetened almond milk, cashew milk, coconut milk, oat milk, whatever kind of vegan milk you want to add, and a liquid sweetener of your choice. We like to use maple syrup. Then we're going to spice it up. We have cinnamon, ginger, nutmeg, cloves, and salt. And of course, we gotta add some pumpkin to this because it is a pumpkin pie chia pudding. And we're also going to add in some vanilla extract. Whisk that together until everything is nice and uniform. And then last but not least, we're going to sprinkle over some chia seed and then just mix that together until it is nice and uniform. Then we're going to pop a lid on that and place it into the refrigerator for about six hours or preferably overnight. And the next morning you've got yourself some pumpkin pie chia pudding, that's it. So I decided to portion these out into single serving jars just to make things easier. And I topped it with some coconut yogurt, which is optional, but highly recommend it. I love the tang that it adds to the recipe. And you can also top it with some cinnamon. And to take it to the next level, raspberries and pumpkin seeds work well too. So yeah, that's it, enjoy. Thank you guys for watching. We hope you enjoyed this video. We hope you try out these recipes. Make sure you guys tag us on Instagram. I am Sweet Simple Vegan on Instagram. I'm Conscious Chris. And uh, that is all we have to say for today. I hope you're having a lovely Friday wherever you are. You had a great week and hopefully have you got some fun plans for the weekend. Yeah, so I will see you or we will see you next Wednesday. Peace, ladies.